couch Dogs, me, guitar lessons Hey there Lick and Riffers, how are you doing? Welcome to another full fingerstyle arrangement lesson right here on Lick and Riff and in this video we're going to learn an arrangement I made especially for you guys and girls on request for Georgia On My Mind. This is a beautiful, beautiful song and I tried my best to make the best arrangement possible for you to learn and enjoy. First I'm going to play it for you so you can see and hear how it goes and then I'm going to break it down for you lick by lick, chord by chord, note by note with tabs right here on the screen as usual. First it goes like this, enjoy. Alright, so that's the arrangement. Now let's learn it. You start with this. Okay, now this is C7. Okay, I bar the third fret and I put five on the second string and the chord is strings one, two, three, and five. Now I slide into it, I play strings two, three, and five, and then three on the E string. That's the first lick. Okay, now you can make another variation here. You can uh, play four on the third string. This will be C major 7, so you can do this. And then turn it into C7 by taking the finger off and playing 3 on the 3rd string. And that's another variation you can play. Okay? A jazzy variation. Then you have a 2-5-1 move to A minor, meaning that you play this. Okay? This is B half diminished, or B minor 7 flat 5, and then E7, then A minor. So you play it like this. You put B half diminished, which is 3-2-3-2 three, two, three, two on strings 2-5, two, two, okay? 3-2-3-2, three, two, three, two, okay? And then you have E7, which is E7 with a high 7th note, 3 on the 2nd string. Now the melody between these two chords is the same melody, and you play it like this. You play the B bass, and then you can play the chord, but the melody is this. Okay, strings 2, 1, 2. And then E7, and you play strings 1 and 2 again, and it's the same. It's the open 1st string and uh, 3 on the 2nd string, so it's... You can harmonize it however you like. I play it like this. Okay? Now, um, 
actually, I'm not sure I did this in the demonstration. I kind of let the uh, harmonization flow, but what's important is to know the basic melody, and then you can basically play the chord notes anywhere you like. That's another variation. It all depends on your rhythmic perception um, and your own style, of course. That's why I teach you the basics. I teach you the melody and the chords, and then you take it and make it your own arrangement. That's the only way to become a musician instead of copying others, I mean. So um, trust your own instincts. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, then you have A minor, and it's uh, the second string on one and you play it however you like because then immediately I play this. Okay? Sorry, I play the open E string first and then this, which is G minor at nine, or you can look at it as a sort of an embellished uh, A minor over G chord. Okay? Um, the name here doesn't matter, the chord name. What matters is the sound, okay? and it's this. Um, the harmony isn't G minor. It's still A minor, but with um, embellishments. So uh, let's leave the chord name alone and learn how to play it. You bar the third fret again, this time up to the sixth string, and you play 5-3 on the E string. Now before that, remember, you play the open E string, and that allows you to make the transition. So it's... See? I take the chord off. And I play the E string, then, then I play this. And then I do this little move. Okay, it's uh, three slide to four slide to three on the second string. Then I either pull off to one or I play one. Or, okay. And then I add two on the third string and two on the sixth string. This is um, F sharp half diminished or F sharp minor 7 flat 5, or you can call it A minor over F sharp. They're all the same chord, so what matters is the sound. So um, it's this. Okay, and then I move the bass note from 2 to 1 on the 6th string, turning this into F. And then the next uh, melody line is this. Okay? This is F minor. Okay? So you can play one one on the second and third strings with one on the bass again, or just this as a small harmony, a thin harmony, just hinting at the F minor chord. Again, it all depends on your own taste and your own preferences. Um, so I'll give you another demonstration, but let's continue. Um, you have this, okay? You play the F minor chord, okay? One and one on strings two and three instead of one and two, which was until now, okay, and then, or the whole chord. You can also play, and, well, that's a little bit too much. Okay, so um, one, three on the second string. But let's stop here and recap. So we had this, okay, and then F sharp bass, F bass, and then F minor, just hinted at, with one and one on strings two and three. And then we have C, the whole chord, strings one, two, three, and five. Then we have this, okay, or this, okay, if you want an easier way to play it, you can bar with your pinky here. It's a bar on one with uh, three and three on strings one and two. And you play strings one, two, three, and five. Now this, leads us to A, and it's kind of a voice transition. It's on the bass, and you have this on the second string, and you have this on the third string, so it's a nice transition. Right? And you just play it like this. Yeah, I played like this with a syncopation at the end there, uh, meaning that I play the chord, then I play the chord, Okay, strings one, two, three, and five, and then I play strings one, two, and three, and then the fifth string. Okay, this is syncopation, so. Yeah, syncopation is and one. Okay, so. Okay, 
and then you can, you know, arpeggiate the chord if you like. Okay, and then you have this. Okay, it's D minor to G, D minor seven to G, and um, you just put D minor seven, or you can solo it. It's the open D string, then two on the third string, then it's one on the second string, and then this again. Okay, three, four, three, double slide on the second string, then one on the second string, either pulled off or played. Okay, and then the G bass, three on the sixth string, then you have slide from one to two with your second finger on the third string, then you have one on the second string, and then you have two different choices, two different endings. The first verse has the open E string, and then you have C, okay? So it's... Then you have another um, two, five, one move, this time uh, six, two, five, one move, meaning A, seven, and then D minor, seven, and then G, okay? So you can play it any way you like, it's... Now, I like to play G flat 13 here. G flat 13 is this, okay? You can put it on like this, okay? But I like to add the three on the E string as well, so I bar the third fret, and I add four and four on strings two and three. So I have this. It's an augmented chord, you can call it G augmented, but um, you know, if you're playing the three on the D string, you have the seventh note. So it becomes a flat 13 dominant chord, okay? And I like to use this as a transition for the first leg. Okay, so I, I play strings two, one, two, one, and then I slide to five on the second string, and this leads me back to the beginning. So um, A7, D minor seven, any way you like, and then, then I start again. You can do something completely different here. Uh, in the demonstration, I think I led to A7 somewhere like this. Okay, which is kind of a bebop move. It's um, C and then I play 4-3 um, on the second string, then 1-2 into A. Okay, it's a nice move. You can take it, you can play it, or you can just leave it out. It, it's not necessary, it's just a nice transition, so. And then you play everything again. And the second ending, remember this? Okay. We played the E string afterwards in the first um, ending. Now we play the one on the second string again, and then we play C and E7. That's the second ending. So, um... Okay, D minor seven. G. And then one, one on the second string. And then E7. Any way you want to play it is fine. It's a uh, dominant chord leading to A minor, okay? To the chorus or the bridge, if you like, um, or the B part, however you want to name it. Names in music don't matter. What matters is the music. Um, so again, the verse, you start with either C major seven or C seven. And then two, five, one to A minor which is B half diminished, B7, and then A minor. Okay, this chord, let's call it A minor over G, just for comfort. Okay, and then uh, A minor over F sharp, or F sharp half diminished, then F, then F minor there. And then we have C, this chord, let's not name it, and then a, then we have A, D minor 7, G, which is 2, 5, 2, C. Okay? Okay? So, and 
and then um, the first ending. And then you start again. Then at the end, the second ending, you have. Um, One, one on the second string, then C, then E7. Yeah, and then the bridge or the chorus or the B part starts with a minor. Um, just one little note here. I remembered that I did something like this. Okay, somewhere in there. I think it was before the F sharp have diminished. It's the same move. Okay, and then it's two on the third string, then three on the second, then two on the third again, and then one on the second. Just, you know, a blues line. Right? Just for variation. Um, I just remembered and I wanted to show you what I did, so. Okay, you can choose to edit, you can choose to leave it out, um, or you can create your own variation of that line. So, um, the second part. It's A minor, you play the bass note, the fifth string, and then you play two on the third string, and then one, three on the second string into D minor. So it's, and you play the D bass note, the D string, then you have an open E string, so. Okay. Then you have A minor again, and the melody is just strings two, three, two. Okay, you play it with the bass note. Then you have F7. You can do a D shape on one, two, and one on strings two, three, and four with one on the bass note, on the bass string with your thumb. Or if this is too complicated, just do this, okay? I prefer this because it leaves me a free finger in case I want to improvise something. Hey, I wouldn't, but you know, this looks more impressive when you play it actually. You know, instead of just barring and adding one finger, this looks like you know what you're doing. This is a nice trick, um, you know, if you want to impress people. And uh, then you have this again. Okay, the same A minor, D minor move with the open E string. Then you have this, A minor seven, which is A minor with an open third string. You play strings one, two, three, and five. And then you have three zero on the E string. You can pull it off, and then you have D7. You just play the whole chord, string one to four. And then you have the A minor again. Okay, you play the bass, then you play two on the third string. That's the lyric still in the, uh, in the lyrics. And then uh, one, three on the second string and the open E string. Okay. Okay, and then dreams I see. Okay, so it's um, then you have this. Okay, it's kind of a chord solo there for a second. It's this. Remember the B half diminished. Just take it down one string or up musically um, in pitch. Um, three two three two on strings one to four this time. This is. E diminished. Then you have this, which is um, it's a an inversion of a half diminished. It's five 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 on strings one two and three with four on the fourth string. Okay, and then you have this, okay, which is it's a seven but with five on the D string as your bass note. Okay. So it's, again, it's uh, A over, over G, so it's A9 over G, actually. If you want to get technical, because you have uh, 7 on the E string there, that's the ninth. Okay, so, okay, it's 7-5 on the E string. Now, you bar the 5th fret and you add 6 on the 3rd string for the A major, the major note. Okay? And you play strings one, two, three, and four on seven, five, six, five. 
Okay, I might have overcomplicated that uh, that explanation. I apologize. It's a bar on five, six on the third string, seven on the E string. And then you take the pinky off, play five on the E string. Then you can add the previous chord if you like. You have space to do it. So, okay, you can do it or you can just do okay, this. It's fine both ways. And then it's two five back to C. It's um, okay. And then you have, so it's D minor seven and G again. And this time it's this. You play the D string, then you play okay, two on the third string, one, three on the second string, and then three, one again on the second string. Okay, just backwards this time. And then right, it's two on the third string, then two, three, two, zero. Okay, two, three, two can be a hammer on pull off or a double slide. And then you play the G chord. Okay, any way you like. Or you can play the G flat 13 again if you like. Um, let's see how that sounds. Okay, now the barring mutes the open third string. So if you like how that sounds, fine. If not, just play G and then you can add the seventh note either on one on the E string or three on the D string, uh, just to make it G7, you know, just to make it interesting. So, uh, okay. you can find your own way to make the transition between G and C7. There are many, many options here. You can uh, play, um, with the open E string there, serving as a G6. And if you play the seventh note, this becomes a sort of a G13 chord. You can also play a G13 chord, but let's not go crazy. The basic uh, melody is always the best melody in my opinion. As long as you keep it beautiful, everybody will be happy. Um, what I did there at the end was I did the six to five again. I added uh, a ninth, C9 there. I added the ninth as, um, you know, a natural harmonic there. I plucked the natural harmonic on 19. It's the open E string on 19. And that, you know, gives it an interesting ending. You can do it, you can leave it out as always. Um, but that's, uh, that's what I did. Okay, just to add a nice, uh, nice finish. So you can go download the tab uh, from the website. The link is right below in the description. But before you go, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. What are you waiting for? There's tons of material here on Lick and Riff for you to learn already. And I upload a new lesson every week or so, sometimes less than a week even. Um, so what are you waiting for? Click subscribe and become a member of the Lick and Riff community. I'll see you in the next lesson. You go have fun with this. Bye for now. Thanks for watching.